Reese Rambles, episode 34. Welcome. How are you all doing? Very nice to have you all here once again. And uh, thank you all for your very positive reception to last week's video offering. Um, I did say that I was going to start offering uh, uh, video alongside the usual audio. Don't panic, audio listeners. Um, I am a predominantly audio listener uh, to all of the podcasts that I listen to, even though I think pretty much all of them do video as well. Um, I just have it on in the background when I'm you know, driving or, or doing other stuff. Um, so I, I, I've always wanted this to be, uh, you know, audio first and kind of predominantly um, for the benefit of listeners. But uh, for anyone else who wants to have it open uh, by their side on their desktop or on their monitor or on their TV or whatever, um, and have the benefit of also being able to see uh, my beautiful face, um, yeah, I'm now offering that for people as well. And I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to do it every week, but um, you know, it depends what the kind of circumstances of the recording are. Um, I listen to I listen to a lot of a lot of podcasts. Obviously, I listen to um, you know there's uh, this week in retro and um, uh, trash taste, safety third, Colin and Samir. Um, I listen to the Yard sometimes. You know Ludwig's podcast against my against my better judgment. Um, there's, there's absolutely loads, and, and and most of those I think all, all of those I just mentioned actually do uh, video as well. And I, I very rarely actually watch the videos. Um, you know I, I am a I am a podcast listener. That's kind of the whole point. Um, otherwise, it's just a YouTube video, isn't it? And um, but anyway, uh, that, that's uh, I talked about all of that, that last week. But I uh, just wanted to thank people for the uh, the positivity around that. And um, yeah, on that note, um, my wife Catherine is actually away today. She, she's gone down to London on a business trip, um, something to do with uh, meat, I guess. She works in the uh, she works in a bacon factory and. Um, I think it's some kind of meat industry. I, I don't know. It's it like whatever. Um, but she she left in the very early hours of this morning, and um, yeah, she's uh, not back until sort of later on this evening. Uh, so I was up really early, and I thought, right, I've got some actual work to do today. Um, I've got some stuff to do with the new space, the new office, which I'll be talking about very shortly. If you're uh, one of the people who haven't uh, haven't heard about that news yet, and. Um, you know, I thought, oh, I'll get the uh, I'll get the ramble recorded uh, really early, and I sat down and I started making notes. I must admit, I've been a bit slack this week. Um, usually, I kind of make notes over the course of the week um, on things that uh, interest me, uh, so I can talk about them in the ramble. And I didn't have any notes at all this week, so I literally just sat down and, and typed them all out in the uh, early hours of the morning. And um, yeah, I, I, I sat down and I was like, right, okay, let's do this. And then I realised. Hang on a second. I'm doing video now, and um, I'm not actually dressed. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think if I'm going to start doing that kind of content, I should be charging money for it. So, um, yeah, I, I had to go and have a shower, and uh, then I realised I'd run out of razor blades, and uh, yeah, obviously my face is looking a bit uh, cut up or whatever because uh, I had to use an old one. And oh, oh, oh. anyway, this is all this is all just nonsense. So, anyway, let's get on with the actual content. Uh, of the ramble and the uh, kind of the primary subject that I want to talk about this week. So the big thing I want to talk about this week is the new space for the channel. The channel is expanding. Very, very exciting stuff. And uh, if you're a supporter of mine, a, patron, a Patreon supporter or a coffee or a, a YouTube channel member, then uh, apologies because this will be old news because you've already had two videos on this subject already. Uh, one, one update, one supporter update where I kind of explained it all and the actual video which uh, is going to be going out on the channel. And uh, the, the the story behind this is that uh, 15 years ago, um, when I had a real job, I know it's very hard to believe, I'm self-employed now, but um, yeah, when I had a real job, I worked for a local IT business, um, like two minutes down the road from me. Very, very fortunate. Um, and I still managed to be late for work pretty much every day, um, which, which is always the way. It's always the people that live closest to the office that uh, end up being the latest, isn't it? But um, yeah, that's by the by. Um, and I'm still friendly with the guy who owns it. So the guy owns, you know, he lives on this farm and he's kind of built this uh, little uh, business empire there of offices and stuff. And, um, you know, he has, he has various other businesses in there uh, alongside him, uh, occupying these offices. And he had one that uh, it became vacant. Um, it was like a year or so ago, obviously, uh, a lot of... I don't know the story behind it, but um, obviously there's a lot of businesses that have kind of moved to remote working or uh, even, you know, not to, sadly not survive the... Uh, the events of the past few years and uh, all of that kind of stuff. And um, there's been a bit of a back and forth o over that time. And I've kind of, in the back of my mind, kind of thought, well, you know, so someone will move in there soon enough. So, um, you know, he's, he, he's a really nice guy. He's not going to charge me what it's actually worth. And I don't want to be in there in the way when, uh, you know, an actual real 
um, you know, tenant comes along. So, um, yeah, but um, yeah, it, it, I, th- I think it's been about a year. I don't, I don't know exactly the, the the initial date that we first spoke about it, but um, yeah, this uh, this office was still available, and um, I thought I'll, I'll pop over and talk to him about it and find out what's going on with it. Turns out he's been using it as um, kind of a bit of extra space for his IT business, but uh, he's he's not. It kind of wasn't listed available for rent anywhere or anything like that. Um, and I explained to him and said, look, I've got loads of stuff relating to the YouTube channel and relating to my collection and, uh, and everything else. And it'd be nice to have uh, a space where I can kind of sort all of that stuff out uh, and also do some filming and stuff in there as well. And um, yeah, m- maybe if I end up being in there longer term, it could grow into a studio space or whatever. Uh, and he was he was really, really, I mean, he watches the channel. Um, you know, we, we actually talked quite a bit about YouTube and about some of his favourite channels and stuff. And uh, he basically says that, uh, you know, it, 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 much the same as me, he doesn't really watch broadcast TV anymore. He, he just sits and watches YouTube <laughs> videos on his TV. Um, you know, he's like a massive, like, Mr. Beast fan and stuff, which is uh, which is quite cool, really. But, um, yeah, and he, he watches my channel, obviously. He was, he's been aware of it since the very beginning and he's, he's been very supportive of it. And um, he was like, yeah, you know, you know, he's quite excited about it. He was like, yeah, you know, you know, I'll find the keys for you, help, help yourself. Um, there's the office there, which is four times the size of, of this room where I record all of my stuff currently. Uh, and there's also another bigger office attached to it. So the bit that I'm in is, um, I'll just whack the microphone there. Uh, the bit that I'm in is, um, it's, it's like the meeting room, I guess, attached to this office. But the, the, they can be, they're actually partitioned off. And um, yeah, it was like, I'll find the keys for you, you know, and then you can start moving stuff in. And I've started moving stuff in and it, it, it's really got me thinking about the channel and about, you know, having the extra space and where I can actually like work on projects rather than, uh, you know, working in amongst the current mess that I have here. And um, yeah, so it's it's quite an exciting video, quite an exciting announcement and a development uh, for the channel. Um, so I put it out there. There's, there's uh, you know, most of it's kind of based around this uh, this kind of talking headshot to camera of me kind of sat in <laughs> in a desk in the middle of this empty office um, in amongst me kind of moving in. And some good clips of uh, me moving stuff over and of the kind of stuff that's uh, going to be in there. And of course, the extra space that is available. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's quite cool. I guess it's quite a milestone, um, depending on how I'm, how I'm actually going to look at this longer term, because, you know, if I'm working on the assumption that it is going to be like a new studio, then uh, yeah, you know, it's very exciting. But if it's just going to be a little space where I kind of sort stuff out, then it's it's boring. But um, aim high, as they say. Um, thankfully, the chap is uh, he's very supportive. Um, as I mentioned in the video, I, I don't think he wants to be uh, named or featured in any of the videos, which is absolutely fair enough. That's up to him. But um, yeah, it got me thinking. Um, the the whole move thing and the the, the big changes uh, really got me thinking about. Um, studio spaces because I love this space that I've built here um, you know it, it's full of all of my uh, my favorite stuff and um, uh, you know I, I like the look of it and kind of the vibe of it and you know I've even gone out and bought like uh, you know specific lenses to try and get the look that I want um, and I, you know I've generally been really pleased with the way things have kind of evolved over the past few years and um, you know I, I don't think I'd ever want to kind of move away from this uh, permanently, but um, there are a lot of projects where a bit of extra space would be incredibly useful and would make my life a lot easier. And yeah, I suppose the main thing, or well, yeah, I, I think it's an important thing um, because I, I started talking about this space, um, you know, in, in videos and stuff and, and publicly now, and it doesn't have a name. You know, the, the YouTube channels. Um, you know, I mean, the example I keep coming back to is Neil, obviously, RMC. And I'll talk about him a little bit later on uh, because we are actually popping down to see him um, tomorrow. I'm getting up very early tomorrow to pop down and see him and do a thing uh, in his space, which is called The Cave and has been since the very beginning. And obviously, there's a whole story behind that. And it's like, well, you know, what, what do I call my... You know, I've never really had a proper name for... Uh, uh, for my existing space, you know, I've always kind of referred to it as my office or my uh, my, my spare room or... Yeah, so that's the thing. And now I've got another space that also doesn't have a name. And it's like, well, you know, maybe one will come to me or maybe, uh, you know, for the next uh, for three years or however long it's taken me to not come up with a name uh, for this space, um, you know, maybe for the next three years I'll be calling it, you know, the, the new office down the road or whatever, which isn't very interesting, is it? Is it? No. 
I um, funnily enough, I uh, wow, this is quite a tangent, but um, I I listened to an audio book a while back, um, which which is one that's quite recommended for anyone who's trying to, and uh, you know, please don't get me wrong, don't get the get the wrong impression, but um. I listened to this audiobook called Superfans a while back. I may have even mentioned it in a ramble. And uh, it, it's to do with like building communities because I've always been really keen on, on kind of building a community around the YouTube channel. And, um, you know, you, you have your biggest supporters and they're the ones that are always kind of look going to look out for you and, and you know, uh, stick up for you when people are being dicks and, and kind of, uh, you know, shout you out when people are looking for recommendations and all that kind of stuff. And, and they're the people that really grow a channel. You know, you can't exist in isolation and just throw videos out there and, and hope that somebody will watch them. Um, you know, you, you need to you need a community and you need to be genuine with them as well. You know, it's not just like a cynical, um, you know, trying to get a, a group of people together to uh, to help promote your channel. Um, you know, that you only kind of talk to when you want something from them, um, which, which you do see, uh, sadly. But one of the things that, that's kind of talked about in, in that book is, um, like, naming things. Naming things is very important, you know. Like, you need um, you need a, a name for your community, which I don't have because, uh, you know, pe people find it very identifiable. And if you've got something that they can rally around, like a, a space, um, you know, that they can all kind of feel like a common ownership of... Um, you know, then then that helps to build the brand and, and build the community and, and kind of, you know, that's what I want. I, I want a community. I, I want to meet people and, and work with people and, and chat to people and, you know, have people that uh, appreciate what I do and, and give me, like, genuine feedback on it and all that kind of stuff. That's that's why I do this. Um, you know, you can't, uh, you can't just uh, tinker with this stuff in isolation and, like I say, just chuck it out there and hope that people, uh, hope that people respond to it. So, yeah, um, names for names for this space. <laughs> And um, names for the new space. Uh, once you've seen it and seen what it's all about, that would be uh, that would be quite cool. Be some quite useful uh, feedback for me. And I actually, I was thinking about like, you know longer term. And of course, you've got to daydream about this stuff. And, and like I say, you you've got to kind of dream big. Um, longer term, what are what are some of the can the channels that kind of inspired me? And uh, what what do their spaces look like? And and how have they laid them out? And how do they work? Um, you know, this this was very much this this is a very small space. Um, you know, the the one that I've got at home that you've seen in all of my videos. Um, that there wasn't really much that I could do with it. And I, I must admit, when I changed the layout of this, uh, one of one of kind of the negatives of that was the loss of desk space because I had a lot of desk space in my my old setup, and it was really nice to have sort of multiple machines set up. Um, and I, I, I deliberately got rid of that in favour of more storage space. So I've got this racking now, which has kind of become a bit of a an iconic um, thing, and of course something that I, I wouldn't get rid of. But um, yeah, um, so it, it would be nice to to have all, all the extra desk space and have multiple things actually set up and, uh, and working as well. Um, so yeah, some some other YouTube channels that have inspired me or that inspired me in the early days. Now there are. I'm going to say up front, there are some smaller channels that I'm, I'm very friendly with, and I'm not going to be mentioning any of those. I was thinking about this before I sat down uh, to record, and I really want to do a specific episode just shouting those guys out there. They're actually the people that I'm going to see at the cave tomorrow. Um, one of them is basically putting on an event there that I've been invited along to, and um, you know, very excited to be a part of that and a part of that group. Uh, but it's basically like a bunch of a bunch of tech YouTubers. Um, all being hosted by 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 Neil, our glorious leader, who is uh, evidently inspired us all uh, to do this thing. But um, yes, so um, back in um, oh, twenty twenty, it was it was towards the end of it was like se September. It was September twenty twenty. I went to visit Neil in his. I want to say original cave. Obviously, the original cave was in his house, but the first one that wasn't in his house, the first one that was in a rented office. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was kind of a, a bit of a weird time amongst the whole uh, events of the time. Um, you know, they, they kind of lifted the restrictions and stuff and we were allowed to kind of mix with people and stuff again. And my, my wife was very keen to get out of the house and, and have a bit of a holiday. Obviously, we couldn't go abroad. So we went to uh, down to the Cotswolds, which was very nice. And um, it was only kind of in the, in the immediate run up to that that I, I realised that, oh, actually, we're staying about five miles down the road from the cave. Um you know, I was a big part of the RMC community at the time, and um, still am. And um, 
you know, I thought, oh, send, send Neil a message and see if he minds me just popping in for five minutes just to say hi. And I actually ended up spending some time there and it, it was all very interesting. And that's kind of stuck with me because uh, the reason the reason that I kind of mention all of this is that that was a similar size to what I've got now. And I'm kind of looking to put together a similar setup. Now, obviously, it, you can't, can't just blindly copy someone else's setup. Um, you know, everyone everyone's channel has to kind of have its own visual identity and all that kind of stuff and its own personality. Um, but it got me thinking about inspiration and, and kind of some other YouTubers that kind of have uh, these kind of spaces. And I remember I've been watching his channel for a few years now, and um, I, I went back and found the uh, the video where he actually initially put that space together, thinking, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I could get some inspiration and stuff, and um, you know, see how it was kind of originally laid out. And uh, you know, I know it was updated a couple of times in in the time that he was in there, and uh, you know, the, the thing, you know, what what were the reasons behind that, and uh, you know, is that uh, potential inspiration for me? So. I went back to that video, um, which of course I will link to in the usual places. And of course, that was the first appearance of the, the Apple crates. Um, obviously everyone, um, well, not everyone, but um, you know, a, a lot of people who have these, uh, these, these YouTube channels uh, dealing with tech stuff and, and retro tech kind of stuff, um, like to have their projects and things displayed for their viewers. Um, you know, it's quite nice. I, I've got some of my older things on the shelves behind me. Uh, I've got the Atari 260 ST and the, the Neo Geo joystick, which were kind of uh, two things that I covered fairly early on in the channel that, that were quite successful. Um, I've got the the Auric Atmos uh, from the IT crowd. That was that was a, a very early, uh, you know, relatively successful video for me. And the the, the video music, the homemade video music uh, clone that I built, um, you know, and it's a very deliberate choice to have those on that back shelf. And actually, the the thinking behind that shelf originally was that um, I was actually going to change. A, there are a couple of early videos where that first went in when I, I actually changed what was on the shelf depending on what was in the video. So if I was talking about like PC games, I'd have like a load of PC big box games on the shelf behind me. And it got to the point where that was just far too much of a, a, a hassle and a faff. Um, and so I ended up just picking a couple of my favourite things from uh, sort of early videos on my channel that I, I'd, I'd covered and it hasn't changed since. Um, you know, I think, I think it looks quite nice with the lighting and stuff. And uh, yeah, everyone likes to have their projects on display. Obviously, kind of the uh, the racking is also kind of visible in my videos as well. And I've got some other stuff uh, from my videos uh, and some stuff from uh, potential for potential view future videos there as well as a, a bit of a teaser for people. And yeah, that's the that's the route that Neil went down with his Apple crates. You know, got some nice old computers and some uh, boxed games and, and knickknacks and gadgets and things. And only very very recently has he kind of dismantled that set and. Um, you know, kind of moved on and started using different areas of his space for filming. And I must admit, um, obviously, you know, it's his channel, it's his kind of choice to uh, do what he wants with it. But I must admit, I was a bit disappointed to see it go because it was kind of, you know, as a long-term viewer and a long-term fan, it was kind of part of the visual brand brand and identity of the channel. And it was familiar and it was nice, you know. I mean, that's, that's kind of the vibe of his channel, isn't it? Very kind of, um, you know, familiar and... Uh, you know, you know, it's like uh, going to your weird uncle's house who's got lots of gadgets and old computers and stuff, and you know, sit there rambling on about them for hours. And it's just nice, you know, it's it's nice. And um, not saying the new setup isn't nice, but uh, I think over the course of the you know the, the the few videos sort of after he got rid of that, it, I think it's obvious that he was kind of experimenting and, and, and using different spaces and stuff. And, and some of those work better than others. And uh, obviously now he's got the new lab space and, and that's all good. But um, anyway, talking about the original studio, because that's what's relevant to, um, potentially relevant to me. Obviously there were the uh, the Apple crates in the background with all the uh, the nice stuff displayed in them. Uh, he had a bit of a storage area with some racking, which is something that I want as well. I'm going to partition part of the office off and have some, some shelving, some racking in there. Um, Mainly because the initial use of this new space is to sort of sort out a lot of uh, crap that I've had uh, accumulating over the past few years and um, having some shelves to actually store it on while it's being sorted would be really useful because at the minute I've got stuff that's in boxes and things and it's quite hard to get to and it's really, um, you know, it makes doing anything with it quite difficult. Um, and he also had um, he also had like a bit of a, a workshop uh, slash 
you know, um, you know, a dedicated desk space for actually working on projects and, and doing like soldering and, and and that kind of stuff. And that's something that I really desperately need. So I'm not constantly swapping stuff in and out on this desk. Um, I will be doing I will be doing projects at home still as well. You know, I don't want to spend all my time at this place. Um, and I will be, you know, doing all the uh, like all the talking headshots and stuff at home as well for the foreseeable future. But um, yeah, something that that I also need a bit, a bit of a workshop space. So it was interesting to see how he'd done that. And um, yeah, then that that kind of uh, continued to evolve. Um, you know, he, he got a standing desk, and um, I've noticed that a couple of YouTubers and a couple of people that I will mention in this uh, have standing desks. And there was a standing desk company that actually. Uh, got in touch with me a few months back, and um, I say a few months back, it was probably like six months ago. And obviously, a standing desk wouldn't work in in my kind of usual space. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, there's just too much stuff around. You need, you need kind of space around it for it to for it to go up and down. And um, I actually I actually spoke to a couple of other YouTubers at the time who I knew had reviewed them, saying, "Look, are, are, are these actually any good, or are they? You know, did you just do it because you wanted to get your hands on a freestanding desk?" And uh, thankfully, the feedback from them was good. And um, yeah, I'm quite uh, quite tempted to uh, message those people back now. And um, obviously, I have a place where I can actually get it set up properly, and I, I can actually use it as part of my setup. Another part, uh, another problem with that, just uh, by the by, is that um, they. Um, they said, oh, you know, are you interested in this standing desk? You can have it for free. All we want is kind of a video review. Um, they were quite upfront about kind of not wanting like editorial control over the video and stuff, which is really nice. And, um, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to work with anyone who'd, uh, you know, want, want to change the content of the video to try and uh, mislead people um, because ultimately it's my channel um, and uh, it's my audience. And I don't want to take the piss out of my audience by, uh, you know, feeding them rubbish that's been dictated to me by some marketing company but um yeah you know I was quite confident these desks are actually decent and um you know so I emailed them back and I said um you know yeah yeah I'm potentially interested in this um you know what kind kind of what's the deal and they were like oh can you release a, a video on this date and the date was 2 weeks from the date of the email like and I had, obviously I didn't have the desk <laughs> and they were being shipped from China and it's like well you know, even if the desk arrives tomorrow, which is highly unlikely, um, you know, it's going to take at least a few days, if not like a week or so. Um, you know, how, how long am I going to have to put together a video on this thing? It's not going to be like a, an honest and accurate review because I just won't have time to test it properly. Even if I was a full time YouTuber with nothing better to do and, and dropped everything in my schedule purely to focus on this desk, um, it would have been quite a stretch. But uh, in my situation, completely impossible. So. I think what I might do is, is email those people back and, um, you know, just say, look, I've got this new studio space. Um, you know, I need a desk where I can work on stuff. Would you be interested? You know, are you still interested kind of thing? So that's a potential avenue uh, to explore. And of course, make that part of uh, a workshop. And, and, and um, just, uh, you know, Neil did actually change um, the cave slightly after that initial video. He, he did an updated tour, which of course I will also link to, and he built his uh, his workshop area around a standing desk and had like a permanent camera set up and stuff on it, which I, I think is a much better setup and I think is what I want to do. I think um, Elliot um, from the Retro Future has a very, a very similar setup as well, and uh, he's a channel that I watch uh, quite a lot. So yeah, some inspiration there. And uh, yeah, what I've been doing is I've been taking uh, lots of screenshots of, of various channels, uh, you know, as I watch them and, uh, you know, trying to remember people's kind of studio tours and things and going back and finding them and screenshotting them and collecting all of those together as like a, like a, <laughs> like a mood board inspiration type thing. Uh, another one is Action Retro, of course. Uh, when he first started, and his channel actually started around the same time as mine. Um, really, I can highly recommend Action Retro uh, if you haven't checked him out yet. I, I think everyone knows who he is by now. But um, yeah, Sean uh, started around the same time as me, and we actually kind of chatted as well in those early days. And his channel has just massively overtaken mine, and it, you know he's it, rapidly approaching 100,000 subscribers now. It, you know, it's like literally over three times the size of my channel. And it's very, very well earned in his case. Um, you know, he's consistently put out videos every single week and they've been of a consistent quality. And, 
you know, fair play to him. My hat, my hat is off to him. And he, I'm a patron of his. And in fact, I'm, I'm actually a top tier patron of his. And he does a lot of, um, you know, patron exclusive videos. And he was a big inspiration for me doing my own patron exclusive videos. And I really like his studio setup. So, you know, similar to me when he first started, um, well, I say similar to me, but um, he, he basically did everything on, on one desk. That, that was literally the only space he had for filming. And he didn't appear in his videos. You never actually got to see his face. Um, it was just him kind of pointing at stuff and there was this like arm that came in from the side and he, he kind of made it a whole thing and kind of made it the whole like identity of his channel and it, it, it was really, really good. I was a bit concerned about, you know, when he said he was going to set up this new space and, you know, he'd moved into a bigger house and he was building a studio in the basement and stuff. And I thought, well, you know, is the channel kind of going to lose um, some of that kind of charm and that, that kind of quirkiness that it had earlier on? And I'm very pleased to say that uh, it, he's just gone from strength to strength and... Uh, it's actually even better now we can see his face. And he, he's another guy who, um, you know, presents from a standing desk. It's, it's a really good setup to have a desk in front of you that you can put stuff on um, as you're talking about it and have the camera the other side, which is something I've never been able to do uh, in this space here. So um, another big inspiration, another guy who uh, whose setup I've taken a few screenshots of um, just for future reference. Um, yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the sound deadening stuff. He's got the uh, he's even got like the office style suspended ceiling and stuff in there, like I've got. Although you don't see that on camera, and um, yeah, it's, it's you know it's quite basic lighting setup. He's just got the two lights, and uh, he's got like a permanently set up overhead uh, mic that's just kind of held held up with uh, you know a couple of light stands, and uh, yeah, quite. Uh, you know, clever. I'm sure it's probably evolved since he did that initial tour, but um, yeah, quite uh, inspirational that. And again, kind of kind of a similar size to uh, what I'm looking to potentially set up as well. So uh, yeah, another inspiration. Another one is uh, Crazy Ken's uh, Crazy <laughs> Crazy Ken's Tech Talk. Um, yeah, sorry, a bit of a tongue twister, especially in this early hour of the morning. And um, yeah, I. would He's um I'm not I must say I'm not I'm not really a regular viewer of this channel. Um he's been on my radar for quite a few years now and uh, you know he's he's done a lot of stuff in, over the years that's been really interesting that I've watched but um it, it's not one I watch religiously but um I do really like his studio setup. Um you know he, he's just got this like single uh, shelf in the background this this rack um that goes like floor to ceiling and he's got some old machines that he's featured in, in pre previous videos uh, and there's just a desk next to it that's got uh, you know a, a computer and a, a lamp on it and stuff and he's, he's got the uh you know the the youtuber mood lighting that's kind of this uh, lovely kind of bluish color and um yeah i think i think that could work quite well i've got a big white wall in this space that i could potentially make use of and i could set up something very similar to that um you know, in that space quite easily. Um, perhaps, perhaps a good starting point, and then kind of see where I go from there. Um, but yeah, another potential inspiration. And um, of course, there's the eight bit guy as well. Um, so he's actually built. He's always had this this very distinctive studio setup that he's had for like getting on for. for I mean, how long has YouTube been a thing? Since like two thousand and seven. Um, yeah, like 15 years, he's had this studio that's that's been kind of unchanging. And it's a very strong um, kind of visual uh, look for his channel. Um, and uh, yeah, he uh, he recently moved out of his house and built a, a dedicated studio building in his garden and replicated his existing studio in there, which I think was quite a clever move. And that's it's, it's also something I've kind of pondered with this as well, because... I could take all of this stuff and I could put it in that new space and just have it set up in a corner. And people have probably been none the wiser if I, you know, if I was smart about it. And yet I'd be surrounded by this much bigger, uh, more useful space and have kind of extra bits to it. The other benefit of that as well is that um, this room um, was never really decorated properly. We, we've re like redecorated and renovated our entire house in the, in the time that we've lived here. Uh, but this room was was done very hastily, and uh, you know we slapped some paint over it and put that put down some very cheap carpet, and then I kind of moved all of this stuff in here, and it's been impossible to do anything else, anything else with it. And there are issues with this room. Um, the radiator in here is absolutely ancient. The floor creaks. Um, the ceiling is actually uh, kind of falling apart. Um, I, I tried to put some sound deadening panels up there and um, 
It, yeah, they, they ended up basically pulling the paint off the ceiling, and there's like uh, there's also like chunks missing out of the ceiling as well. So, you know, I, I could sneakily pack all of this stuff up and move it into the new office and set it all up in a corner exactly the same. And would anyone notice? Um, perhaps that's you know quite an interesting challenge. But um, yeah, the interesting thing about the 8-bit guy space, and this is another channel that I, I don't, I don't really watch anymore. Um, I, I used to, but um, again, it's, it's just one I've, I've kind of drifted away from. There's so much good stuff on YouTube nowadays that it's like I just, I just don't have time to watch everyone. But um, yeah, he, he's got the he's got the studio space itself. Uh, but his new studio building also has a couple of extra spaces, which are quite useful. So it's got like this, this it, it's almost like a reception desk area. Uh, but it just gives him a bit more um, a bit more desk space. And he has filmed some stuff in there. I've seen that he has done some videos in there. Um, and just a little bit of variety, but it's, it still kind of follows the same kind of identity and the same kind of brand as his kind of main studio area. And um, he also has like a storage space, like a storage room, which we've seen. Um, if, if you've seen his solar videos, which of course I, I watched because uh, I, I've done solar stuff in the past, and it's interesting to see how uh, you know a, a similar channel might approach that same subject. Um, and it's also yeah, he's also got kind of got this small storage room uh, in the back as well that uh, he, he's also done some bits of filming, and yet again, it's all kind of t tied in and, and part of the same setup. On that note, one that's kind of evolved over the years and that's always been visually quite interesting is, of course, Perifractic's Retro Recipes. And again, it's another channel that um, I used to watch a lot of, and he kind of he's been he's been starting to do this. Well, I say starting to it. It's been it's quite well a well established thing now. But um, you know, I, I was watching his channel. I remember when he was like really really working hard to uh, get to a hundred thousand subscribers because he really wanted that silver play button that YouTube sent to you uh, when you hit a hundred thousand. And um, yeah, I um, you know I remember watching his channel back in those days, and it, it, he's kind of shifted. He used to do a lot of technical stuff and building stuff and fixing stuff and all, all that kind of thing. And it does very occasionally uh, sort of dabble with that kind of thing uh, nowadays. But um, I think he's he's kind of predominantly known now for his his kind of retro show, which is um, an actual proper uh, TV style hosted presented thing that he does with his wife, um, the, uh, the the famous Lady Fractic, of course. And uh, yeah, recently announced that they're expecting a baby, by the way. So uh, congratulations to you guys. I'm sure you're uh, regular uh, listeners to Reese Rambles, but um, yeah, and. Um, but the, but the studio that, uh, that they've put together in their house for this show it, it is really really impressive. You know, it's got like this big uh, U-shaped desk around the back with all of the machines and stuff on it, and there are some bits of it that aren't uh, don't appear to be real. Um, you know, they've they've got um, uh, you know sometimes stuff appears in the background on the walls and stuff, and you think, well, that's that's not actually there, and. Um, you know, they've got this desk in front of them that they do, uh, you know, when they do the retro show that's got like monitors and things on it that uh, they do a very convincing job of, of kind of pretending to look at while they're talking about stuff. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of, that's quite obviously not uh, not real. Um, and, you know, then it cuts to another shot of them kind of, um, you know, the, the actual, uh, the screens, screens themselves. Um, really clever setup. It uh, looks really, really nice. I, I like kind of the um, I like the lighting, you know, particularly in the background. I, I think it's a really great look, and um, yeah, potentially some uh, potentially some inspiration to be had there. Uh, they've got quite a good balance between that kind of clean, empty, um, you know, studio kind of look and having lots of stuff, um, which I like. I like I like to be surrounded by stuff. I think um, I, I'm going to talk about. There's one more channel I'm going to talk about who is who's surrounded by stuff. Um, but yeah, and then there's there's like a second camera angle that they occasionally cut to where you get to see like the uh, you know the, the lighting setup and the uh, you know the the overhead mic and stuff that they use as well, and um, you kind of get to see a bit more of their studio and a bit kind of a bit more how it, how it kind of fits into their house, and it's like mm, yeah, you know that that could uh, that kind of thing could work, you know, like a sofa, a bit more of an informal thing, you know, sofa in the middle, a bit of a coffee table type thing. Uh, might be nice. Might be even you know kind of a secondary space in addition to the the main presenting workshoppy um, workbench space. Don't know. Not sure. Potentially again some inspiration there. And finally, uh, just speaking about YouTubers who are surrounded with stuff. Uh, there's also Adrian's digital basement. Um, 
I wanted to. I just, I just wanted to main, mention Adrian because he's another one that's kind of his channel looks very distinctive, and it's had this, um, you know, it's, it's had this specific look to it for the longest time now, and it's it's just him in his basement, surrounded by his things and his tools and his projects, and it's like it, it's cozy, isn't it? And it's very genuine as well because it's his actual workspace where he kind of uh, works on this stuff and, and and builds all of this stuff. So. Um, yeah, um, I don't know if I don't know if you could build something like that from scratch. I think it would have to evolve organically. Um, but you know, again, he's got like this big kind of desk uh, space. There's a lot of desk space in there, which it's kind of quite hard to to, to see really, um, unless you're specifically looking for it, because it's always just covered in stuff, uh, which is great. Um, you know, that's kind of the thing, kind of thing that I want. But he's also got a lot of shelf space above it, and also a lot of storage space. You know, really, really well thought out and and used, and um, you know, um, you know, it's a very like I say, it's a very kind of genuine and uh, lived in space, and uh, I like that. It, it feels cozy. Um, you know, it feels like the ceilings are low and it feels like you're in there with him and you know he's showing you all of his latest projects and it's like yeah I like that vibe you know maybe that's like that's a good vibe to go for for a new space perhaps so yeah some potential inspiration there I mean if you have any other ideas uh, for channels that you can recommend they were they were just kind of the few that I thought of over the past few days that just kind of immediately sprang to mind and I thought um yeah, you know, I could use some of these guys for inspiration. But um, yeah, if there's any others, uh, people whose uh, channels you really like the look of and you really like the vibe of, and you think, yeah, that, that could work well for Reese. Um, yeah, let, you know, let me know. I, I, like I say, I'm, I'm kind of screenshotting these things and, and collecting them for inspiration, um, you know, for potential uh, shopping for shelving and stuff. Um, to go in this space again I am kind of getting a bit ahead of myself I'm very very conscious of that um, it may well be that I just end up using this office to sort a load of stuff out and then actually it ends up being too much of a pain to go over there all the time and I just end up carrying on as I am but um, the more I think about it the more I think the extra space is, is going to make my life a lot easier and if I have that space I want to do something nice with it something nice and visual uh, for, for viewers to, to look at so um, yeah, as announced in that video, uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is going through all of my boxes of stuff <laughs> that I've had stored away. Um, it, I imagine that's going to be quite a long video. Um, you know, I'll get the proper camera set up and everything, proper mic set up and, and make a proper uh, sit down, cosy video of uh, exploring those boxes. Uh, just carrying them in, um, you know, the, the, there were some long forgotten projects. There was the, uh, the an Amstrad PC1512. If you've ever looked at my website, um, I, I did some stuff very early on with that. I, I was trying to design. So the, the the story behind the Amstrad, and I'll talk a bit more, bit more about this in the video when I uh, when I get it out. But um, I bought this PC fifteen twelve, which is an old Amstrad PC from the eighties, and they came with a matching monitor. And the the monitor actually powers the the PC as well. So basically, you, you plug the power cable into the monitor, and then the the there's two cables between the monitor and the PC, one that carries video, one that carries power. Uh, but it works backwards to the way that you would, would expect, and the, the actual monitor powers the PC. And um, so uh, basically the, the monitor didn't work, and I wanted to get this PC up and running, so I built a power supply for it, um, an external one, obviously quite easy to kind of work out the pin out and stuff for that, so that wasn't an issue. And but getting the, the video signal out of it was a bit more complicated because some of the video circuitry is actually in the monitor. So it doesn't output like a standard VGA signal or anything like that. And I spent, I actually spent quite a lot of time putting together quite a technical project um, just trying to turn these signals into something kind of more standard and more useful. And I actually built a circuit called the Amstrad Video Liberator. Amstrad Video Liberator. And um, yeah, it worked. Um, I, I piped that into um, a couple of different kind of uh, video converter type things and actually managed to capture some actual footage from this machine running. And I, I kind of documented everything up to the point that it still had some issues and it, it still wasn't quite right. You know, like the levels that it was outputting were wrong and everything else. And I, I documented everything up to that point on my website and I still got emails about it from people. And this was like, I mean, th th this was before... The channel, I think. Um, so you know, over three years ago, I still get people saying, "Oh, I've, I've got this Amstrad PC. The monitor doesn't work. I'm trying to build one of your video liberators." And even though I explain on the page that you know this thing isn't, you know, this thing's kind of a work in progress, and you know, could someone 
please could someone more knowledgeable than me pick this up and, and kind of finish it for me because I, I don't really know where where to go with it. Um, I still get people asking for help and advice with it and people building the power supplies and stuff. And it's like, well, you know, literally all I know about this is on the website. Um, I'm really sorry and... You know, but um, anyway, I, I will be uh, getting that machine back out. Perhaps it'd be interesting to see if it still works, considering how much it was kind of hacked and chopped around. Uh, God, yeah, it was it was definitely a bit of a mess. Um, so there's that. Um, I've got a whole box of Famicoms, Nintendo Famicom. You know, the um, original Japanese version of the of the NES console or the NES. Um, I had a bit of a sideline again before the channel, and again, it's something that's kind of covered on my website in kind of the early days of the website. Um, I had a bit of a sideline importing those from Japan, buying them on Baiyi, um, and, then, and then like fixing them up and um, selling them on eBay, uh, but doing like uh, composite video mods and, and, and stuff on them. And I bought like a massive job lot of them, and, and some of them are really, really quite nice condition in boxes and stuff with all the accessories and things. You can pick them up dirt cheap um, in Japan, particularly if you um, if you buy them in bulk. And um, yeah, I've just got a whole box of those, and they're all like stripped down, and some of them are like partially modified, ready to go, and you know I've got bo like boxes of brand new power supplies for them and stuff. And that's another project where it just got to a point, and it was like, well, I've not got space to actually work on these. Um, so it'd be interesting to get those out and see exactly what what I have there, and uh, get working on those again, potentially get some of those sold or or whatever. Um, I've got a brand new inbox ThinkPad, um, three eighty something. Um, I bought it for a video. I thought, oh, you know, I, I will unbox a brand new, you know, 1990s, uh, early 90s ThinkPad. Um, and, and particularly the, the 380 is, is quite a special model to me because it was the first laptop I ever had. Um, you know, my, my dad had one as like a business laptop way, way back. And obviously once that was kind of well obsolete and, and on its last legs, it, the, you know, the business kind of finally wrote it off and he brought it home and he was like, oh, here you go. Uh, you can tinker with this. And I, 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 I love that laptop. You know, the, the screen on it was completely and utterly hopeless and uh, spec wise, it, it was it was terrible, you know, especially by the time I got my hands on it, there was barely, you couldn't run anything on it. Um, but I used to like use it for like writing stuff writing like short stories and um i think i even managed to get the internet hooked up and uh you know it, it was like horrifically slow and, and terrible for browsing the internet but uh yeah fond memories of that machine and um i actually found someone selling them brand new in box on ebay a, a few years back and thought oh i could do like an unboxing video and stuff i have I, I must say i have actually had it out of the box and had it up and running i also bought a brand new battery for it so there's no worries about you know like leaking batteries and stuff like that but um you know, if I could get that box back up and, and maybe do an unboxing uh, on the channel and kind of show how they would have been initially, you know, kind of, kind of shipped and set up and stuff, that would be uh, an interesting thing to cover for the channel. And there's just like loads of stuff like that that I've picked up over the years and thought, oh, you know, that, that'll make an interesting video one day. And um, because I'm so busy on whatever I'm currently working on, you know, I kind of lose track of the, the other stuff, the longer term stuff. And having a separate space where I can actually sort that stuff out is going to be really beneficial. But I think that will do you for this week. Thank you ever so much for listening and or watching. It's been fantastic having you here once again. Uh, thank you. I do very much appreciate all of the support that I get for the Rambles and, of course, for Control Alt Reese. Uh, very exciting times. And, uh, yeah, um, thank you very much for listening. But, uh, yeah, go and subscribe to some of those channels that I mentioned. I've linked to uh, some of their studio tours and stuff in the usual places, in the show notes on your podcasting app and uh, in the, uh, the, the the description on YouTube. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the Reese Rambles channel on YouTube, um, now would be a good time to do that. Um, I'm actually, I've got like 600 odd subscribers or, or something. So um, maybe nice to maybe target like a thousand by the end of the year or something. Maybe that should be something that I kind of actively... Uh, aim for and kind of grow towards but um anyway the day is just about to begin i've got some work to do today and uh, hopefully get some more stuff moved over to the new space so that's it um yeah bugger off goodbye